Gallium. A toxic element on the periodic table holds a definitive role in the importance of stable isotopes and safety measures. William Crook was the first to identify the element through the technique of flame spectroscopy. Crook identified a green spectral line generated by a selenium ore that he had stored from a sulfuric acid factory. The bright green line, never seen before in the spectrum of a sample of selenium, would be the first identification of thallium in 1861. The element would be named after the Greek word thallos, the color of a young shoot or sprout. However, in 1862, French scientist Claude Auguste Lamy would perform further research on the element and would get an actual sample of thallium. When presenting both samples in the 1862 International Exhibition, the two fought over the credit of thallium. However, both scientists were respectively credited later on, but most credit was given to Krug due to his ability of using spectroscopy to identify the element. Relatively rare in the Earth's crust, with an average concentration of about 0.7 mg per kilogram, this makes it less abundant than many other elements, but not extremely rare. Thallium does not occur in its free metallic state in nature due to its high reactivity, but instead it is typically found in mineral compounds, often with heavy metal ores such as zinc, copper, lead, or selenium. Thallium has 41 known isotopes with the atomic masses ranging from 176 to 216. Only two of these isotopes, thallium-203 and thallium-205, are naturally occurring and stable. The remaining 39 isotopes are synthetically made through particle accelerators or nuclear reactors, making them instable and radioactive. Thallium-201 is widely used in the myocardial perfusion imaging, a type of nuclear medicine procedure that evaluates the blood flow to the heart muscle. During a cardiac stress test, thallium-201 is injected into the bloodstream and its uptake by the heart muscle is measured using a gamma camera. This helps detect areas with poor blood flow, which can indicate coronary artery disease or other heart conditions. This is due to the fact that thallium behaves similarly to potassium in the body, allowing it to be uptaken by the cells via sodium-potassium pump. In cardiac imaging, health heart muscle cells absorb thallium-201 efficiently, while areas with reduced blood flow or damaged tissue show less uptake. This differential uptake is visualized using a gamma camera, producing images that highlight areas of concern. It's because of this type of function that thallium is considered heavily toxic, as it can affect your ability for your cells to produce nerve impulses and will likely kill you through either respiratory paralysis or circulatory disruption, which is why certain safety measures are set in place and precautions are put when doing procedures with these synthetic isotopes. It's also important to consider the fact that thallium is colorless, odorless, and tasteless, which means it can be easily inhaled, absorbed through the skin, or consumed unknowingly. These functions were specifically used in the 60s for insecticides and rodenticides, but were also used controversially for murder cases. And it's for this fact that it's often dubbed the poisoner's poison because those who uh, used it were often exposed to it heavily and would die as well. And I leave you with the idea that you should never underestimate the nature or properties of the chemicals that you use in a lab. Wear your goggles at all times and use the lab equipment appropriately.